Today is a bit of a different video, mostly assembly and a bit more about me and my start to Warhammer modeling in general. I'll also be briefly touching on my plans for the Chaos miniatures and how I get so much modeling done, which is a question that I've been asked a fair few times now. Basically, it's story time. So while I smash out my Chaos miniatures, mainly Corn and Dark Oath, perhaps you, yeah you, with your pile of shame as they call it, can whip something out and get it done while I bulldoze through mine, even if it's just a single character. So on the agenda today is the main bulk of my chaos as mentioned, but that includes a vanguard of corn, a vanguard of slaves to darkness, a few miscellaneous extra heroes, a bloodthirster, and so forth. And now that I have, at the time of this recording, undercoded everything that's shown in the video, I'm sad to announce it's actually not done. Your boy just found a start collecting corn in the spare room stash and, uh, well, I'll power that up to the others off screen. Now on the topic of this little, I guess, um series I'm about to start with. I'm of course starting with the assembly while I give some story. The next one will be the layout for the board I plan on making for them to all sit on, aka a uh, field of lava, with each model having a magnetized location for it on the display. And from there, I'll most likely be doing unit by unit painting videos, which will probably not have any commentary, aside from how I tackled it and what I used briefly. My introduction to Warhammer happened when I was around 10 years old and can be pinned on my brother. He came home from our grandparents with some fantasy orcs and sort of rubbed it in my face, as I got none. Which my father overheard and he was more than pissed at. So before I knew it, we were off to Launton Toy World because the parents wanted to correct the unfair situation. At this age, I was big into models, mainly helicopters and cars, but not really soldiers. Yet. In fact, I hadn't done any at all, so when it came time to choose my first box of Warhammer, I was extremely lost and it took quite a moment to decide. I was definitely drawn to the Tomb Kings, Orcs, and Chaos, but let's be real, Orcs weren't a real option because my brother would have most likely tea-leafed them later. And ultimately, I think it came down to the box art. In question was the hunchbacked 1996-ish multi-part kit with the current on-screen art for the Chaos Warriors, and you can bet that young me was all over it. Heading back home with my newly acquired minis, I was quick to start on them, completely confused at why the guy from the center of the artwork on the box wasn't actually able to be built because where I'd come from model-wise, what you saw on the box was what you could make. But in any case, I slowly but surely got through them, and I mostly sidestepped the weird mutation bits and pieces, which is something that I still prefer nowadays. It's not really something that I enjoy. And uh, then it was on to not painting them. In fact, not one of those Chaos Warriors that I had ever saw paint while I owned them, and yes, that means I don't have them anymore. I have no idea what actually happened to them, but I really didn't enjoy painting as a kid which wouldn't change until I started having a crack in high school, sadly. And that's where my love for Warhammer would actually take off. Somewhere around grades 7 or 8, my father picked up a 3rd edition 40k rulebook from some markets nearby, and they came along with some uh, random, but really admittedly uh, nice bits of terrain, and uh, basically it exploded from there. I was all over the Space Marines of varying chapters, and I liked the idea of the Tyranids, but I found them to be a bit derpy. Looking at you old school carnifex. But during this period, I wasn't actually super into fantasy until close to graduating when my interest reignited with chaos and this time, it brought the high elves along with it. After finishing high school, I actually got my first job at a place that I was very frequently visiting called Red Racer Hobbies in Redcliffe, and thanks to working with the owner's son Josh, who I had been friends with for a while at that point, he enabled my hobby habits and convinced me Darth Sidious style to go for more chaos, which I have to say did really blow up overnight. If I recall, in the span of a couple weeks, I had Metal Chosen, Metal Chosen Command, Lord on Demonic Steed, two boxes of the new and improved Chaos Warriors, Hounds, Lord on Manticore, Archeon Metal, just a real big bundle, and as it turns out, this would be the actual closest I ever came to playing the tabletop game, with a nice fella by the name of Chris hand-holding me way through a game of Island of Blood, I think it was? High Elves vs Skaven, for the purpose of showing some new folks to the game how the game actually worked. Basically, I was paid to play the game with Chris for the newcomer's sake as they were starting out, and I have to admit, I had absolutely no idea what was going on or what I was doing. But I just simply moved the cavalry that came in the set around, and through a lot of winning dice rolls, which was fairly entertaining, I basically ran him off the board. Alas, that's where it ended. I never actually ended up playing or learning how to play properly, and I still really don't get most of it. Which hasn't really affected my love for the minis, despite some absolutely horrible decisions and things that GW has done over the years. 
Also, I should mention that at some point around here, I actually got into Chaos Space Marines also, and, uh, well, going for a dig through some very old USBs, specifically I went and hunted through these USBs, I found some absolutely hilarious images of, uh, the Marines, so behold the glory that whatever this is. Yeah, look, I'm gonna be real with you for a second, these aren't my finest efforts. Random enamel spray with, uh, I don't know what colour idea this was. But uh, at least we can have a laugh, and at the very least, it should point out how much I really didn't enjoy painting back then. Much like my original Chaos Warriors, however, I no longer have any of these miniatures. In fact, I very much fell out with Warhammer for a very long period, and I only kept a select few boxes, and to be specific, a few is quite a lot to normal folks, I just need to clarify there. And that didn't really change until the start of the spicy flu around 2019, when, like a lot of folks, I had to find something to do because I was cooped up all day, every day. But it felt a little bit dirty, because I was resuming Warhammer Fantasy minis, and at that point, Games Workshop hadn't really done anything with the old miniatures that were gone, which allowed for prices to go to stupid new heights, and they've kind of remained fairly stable, even through to now. Specifically, let's look at the High Elves. Some of them go for absolutely stupid prices, and I don't know why people are paying it. The re-release is just around the corner, and enabling this sort of behaviour is only bad for the community, so... I guess it's time to talk about something that might be a bit of a distasteful moment in this video, but when they scrapped and in my opinion pissed all over the burning ashes of the old world, I went completely off their models and refused to buy any for years, even after the eventual return of the old world was announced pretty early on. And that was until they proved that it was actually coming, because I'd grown up with these miniatures and these books. I still have all of my fantasy novels, so to see it just get gutted the way that it did in the end times, that sucked. But to touch on Age of Sigmar, it's not my cup of tea story-wise. I can't speak to the game, because of course I don't play it. But it's no problem if you enjoy it, and yeah, when they properly proved the old world was coming, I actually picked up some of the AOS minis I liked the look of, since what was taken was being returned. Which, to be fair, a lot of the AOS minis are actually stunningly detailed. Marathi is one that stands out. I very much loved the idea of getting her new form, and the older style mini that was more familiar to me, on foot. Also, side note, I'm really, really happy they've expanded the four sub-specific chaos sects with so many models. And although I don't like two of them, flat, outright, just do not like them, I'm still glad they exist. That's really good for the model fans and players alike, I feel. And with the old world coming back, I'd say there's a fair few AOS models that you're going to be able to sneak into your old world armies for heroes or flavor purposes. Anyhow, now you've got a bit of the how I got into Warhammer and why I'm doing the minis. And coming back onto what I'm doing here, as some of you may have seen, I did Scarbrand recently thanks to my best mate getting me Total Warhammer 3. Because I had such a blast playing it, and as a bit of a further nod to my playthrough, I do have a squad of blood letters unbuilt, and they're sitting there until last because I plan of sort of doing a regiment of renown. Like what you get in game, and they're slowly releasing minis for AOS I've seen that also have the tag regiment of renown. So mine will be the Rowdy Trades. What this ultimately means is you can expect drills, hammers, tools in general applied to my blood letters, and perhaps if I can pull it off, Little meat pies and sausage rolls, bottles of iced coffee, and so forth, so that they really capture the tradie lifestyle, and maybe, only maybe, a couple will be sporting Southern Cross tattoos and speed dealers if I can manage it. Also, I should probably note that I was going to give my Bloodthirster a sledgehammer and a hard hat, but the model is so beautiful and it's pretty expensive. I just couldn't bring myself to do it. And when I decided I needed to do something, so I downgraded it to just LEDs for the eyes, I again looked at Scarbrand being my centerpiece and I decided I don't want something as big as him to sort of take away from him and compete a bit too hard, so a nice paint job will be the only thing that can suffice here, I guess. Basically, as mentioned, the whole lot of chaos I have will be in a lava setting, so when I do the large basing with all of them magnetized to it, the bases will be continuous with the way that the lava flows and the terrain looks, and it's very possible at this point I'm actually going to split off my Dark Oath and Untamed off into their own Deadwood setting, and that's because they've just announced the Dark Oath set and another band, so I may have enough of them to actually merit doing an idea like that, especially with this start collecting corn that's popped up to sort of sub in. It also gives me a chance to do more general skeletons and fallen leaves, perhaps some spiderwebs and, you know, dead creepy land vibe. Unshown are some 3D printed minis from Heroes Infinite, an offshoot of Raging Heroes that happen to be corn orientated, including a female demon princess that looks pretty badass, I gotta admit. 
As well as quite a few little single heroes and characters I'll be including, and while we're talking about 3D printed, I have some old Last Sword miniatures files with some werewolves. Now, I might be confused here, but I believe that they were meant to be chaos orientated, so I'm going to be sneaking those in with my corn lot for something a little bit different. Now, you will see that I did assemble knights from the Slaves Vanguard, and I gotta say, that kit is absolutely lame. Um, they suck to build, and I feel like it was pretty poorly designed. Perhaps it was great at the time, but I found them to be a really big slog to do, and they gave me a literal pain in the neck, needing a lot of gap fill at the end, so... I'm going to be lazily skipping over them and selling them in favour of perhaps more Juggernauts, or even maybe another Corn Vanguard to bring my Juggernauts to 7, one of them being the old Metal Lord, of course. And that also gives me uh, some more Blood Warriors and Reavers to build, which I have to say, when it comes to both the Reavers and the Blood Warriors, they are incredibly fun to build and customise. I enjoyed them thoroughly. In fact, I think I enjoyed them the most out of all of the miniatures built here. And I was quite impressed with just how much you can change them up and what you can do, so I dare say that's going to be on the cards. Actually, I'm just going to go ahead and say it. The Corn Vanguard is absolutely bloody excellent, and if you're into the minis like I am, and you've been looking at corn, I really strongly recommend it. It's got a good spread, they're fun to build, the models are great. Now, how I plan to tackle the painting is already laid out mentally. As I said, I'll be doing videos for each section or unit, and that means that if I have 20 Blood Warriors, I'll do all of those by themselves at the same time, or say, all of the Juggernauts at the same time together. And that's because I want to ensure continuity remains between the individual units. Not really too fussy about the heroes and all the other bits, because those will be done sort of independently and might be a bit more detailed, basically because they're going to stand out. In terms of a paint scheme, I'm going to go for an obviously traditional corn look, but perhaps slightly modified. There's a few things that I kind of want to tinker with after doing Scarboy, so we'll have to see how that turns out. Onto another topic as mentioned, how do I get so much hobbying done without seeing a burnout when most people lose interest or motivation? Well that's an easy answer. Taking a look at all the projects that I've worked with on this channel, you'll see that I generally bob between different topics and media, sometimes going hard into one for a little while, or just seemingly doing anything. And the reason is, I do exactly what I'm the most motivated for, ensuring that I don't force myself into something I'm not keen on. And how this helps is basically, for me, it's an unending desire to get the juiciest things done. So basically, if I feel like building a tank but not painting it, that's what I'm going to do. If I brainstorm up some sort of bigger idea, I'll generally toy with it mentally while working on other projects. And when I'm ready and have it worked out to a point that I can start, I usually go full send into the project and see it to completion. The point is, coming up with ideas and considering what it is you're most interested to do, and most importantly, if you're feeling like doing it, do it. Don't sideline your hobby stuff for video games and the like, and once you find a rhythm of feeling like you've gotten what you were keen to do done, then you gap fill with other stuff like reading, gaming, or whatever. I may come off a little bit preachy in this video, but I'm definitely trying to motivate some of you guys with those piles to get through. You can do it. I can do it. Let's get through it. In fact, next up for me Warhammer wise will be most likely a rather large assortment of Lizardmen or Seraphon to get across, and I can comfortably tell you that the first thing I'm going to build is Krokgar and his Carnosaur, assembly wise of course, followed by the Agridon Lancers, and again, just keep it in the thought, the more you do, the more keen you'll be. Anyhow, that's about it for this one. My mates keep telling me that I need to do videos like this, so hey, here's one, leave me alone. Until the next one, take it easy, and I expect at least a single mini done by right now. If you haven't, you're doing it wrong. Get on it. Nah, I'm kidding. Do it at your own pace. <laughs> See ya!